In this video, we're going to look at the study of kinematics. Kinematics is just the study of motion. So we have three distinct parts in kinematics. We have displacement, which is denoted by S of, with respect to T, velocity, which is V with respect to T, and acceleration, which is A with respect to T. If you differentiate displacement, it will take you to velocity. If you differentiate velocity, it will give you acceleration. If you go the other way, if you integrate acceleration, it will take you to velocity. And if you integrate velocity, you will get back to displacement. Let's define these terms. Displacement first. Displacement is not always the distance travelled. And the way I like to illustrate this is to take a picture of the globe. And we travel all the way around the globe and come back to where we started from. Our displacement, D, is equal to zero kilometers whereas our distance traveled is equal to 40,000 kilometers which is the distance around the equator whereas if I travel from A to B in a straight line and say it is two kilometers my displacement and my distance traveled there are both equal but I would have to add one other piece of information for displacement displacement in that case would be northeast so my displacement would be two kilometers northeast whereas the distance traveled would just be two kilometers velocity and speed are closely related but velocity has one extra piece of information if i traveled from a to b and my speed was 20 kilometers per hour my velocity would be 20 kilometers per hour south because i'm traveling in a southerly direction. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So if you're in a car and you press the accelerator button, you start to get faster and faster. Your velocity increases. Whereas if you're in a car and you press the brake, your velocity gets less. So your acceleration is decelerating, so it is negative. If you are travelling in a horizontal direction, say you're travelling from A to B, that's to the right, your distance will be measured in a positive direction and your vo velocity will also be positive. Whereas if you're going from A to C, your displacement will be negative and your velocity will also be classed as negative because you're going in the opposite direction. In the formula booklet, you will be given the following formulas. Acceleration, A, is dv over t, which is also d squared s over dt squared. The distance travelled from time 1 to time 2 is equal to the integral between t1 and t2 of the modulus function v dt and the displacement from t1 to t2 is equal to the integral between t1 and t2 of v dt. Let's go through some of the types of questions you might get on kinematics. Question 1. This involves a graph. 
A particle moves along a horizontal line starting at the point zero. The displacement time graph for the first 20 seconds of its motion is shown below. Displacement is measured in meters. Part A. Part 1. Write down the displacement of the particle after 2 seconds. Part 2. Write the displacement of the particle after 4 seconds. These two questions can be answered from the graph itself. Drawn in the lines for t equals 2 and t equals 4 seconds and I get a displacement after 2 seconds of 5 metres and after 4 seconds of 10 metres. Part B. Find the velocity of the particle between 13 and 20 seconds. So I want the gradient of this line between 13 seconds and 20 seconds. And if I look on the graph, those are the points 13 minus 10, 20, 0. And I know the gradient M of any line is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That can be found in the formula booklet. So that gives me naught minus minus 10 over 20 minus 13, which is equal to 10 over 7. And that is meters per Part C. Find the speed of the particle between 7 and 20 seconds. Well, speed is equal to the magnitude of velocity. So I want the gradient of the line between those two points when t is 7 and t is 10. Again, I want to calculate the gradient between those two points of 7, 10 and 10, 0, that gives me m is equal to 0 minus 10 over 10 minus 7, which is equal to minus 10 over 3. Because I want the magnitude, I want the modular value, which is equal to 10 over 3 meters per second. Part D. Find the total distance travelled by the particle. So we need to find the displacement for each section of the journey. Well, in this section, we have travelled 10 meters. In this section, 20 meters. And in this section, 10 meters. So D, total distance traveled is equal to 10 plus 20 plus 10, which is equal to 40 meters. Question two. A cricket ball is projected directly upwards from ground level. The motion of the cricket ball is modelled by the function h with respect to t is equal to 13t minus 4.9t squared. t is greater than zero. Where h metres is the height of the cricket ball above ground level after t seconds. A. Find the times at which the cricket ball is exactly three metres above the ground. If you draw yourself a little diagram of the trajectory, you're going to get something like this. And we want to find T1 and T2 when H is equal to 3. 
I'm going to use a GDC to solve this. I've opened my TI Inspire to a calculator page. I've already changed the window. So it goes from X is 0 to 5 and from Y 0 to 10. I'm now going to type in my function, which is 13X minus 4.9X squared. Hit enter. And there is my function. In order to uh, find how long or at what times it is three meters above the ground, I need to draw the graph for y equals three. There we go. Now I need to find these two intersection points. So I'll go to menu, geometry, points and lines points of intersection, touch both graphs, doesn't matter in which order. And there I have my two intersection points. One at T is 0 0.255 seconds, and the second one at T is 2.4 seconds. So if I write down my values, T1 is equal to 0 0.255, and T2 is equal to 2.4. Now go to B. B for how long is the cricket ball at least three meters above the ground? Well, the answer to this one is T2 minus T1, which is equal to 2.4 minus 0 0.255, which is equal to 2.14 seconds. Part C. A player catches the cricket ball on its way down at a height of 0 0.8 metres above the ground. Find the length of time the ball was in the air. So if we again draw ourselves a little diagram to show the trajectory. Here's our diagram. The ball starts off at ground level, up in the air, comes down to a that level, which is 0 0.8 metres above the ground. We need to f find how long the ball is in the air. So we need to solve for h equals 0 0.8. So therefore, we've got 13t minus 4.9t squared is equal to 0 0.8. Therefore, I'm going to rearrange it, take everything to the right-hand side. I get 4.9t squared minus 13t plus 0 0.8 is equal to 0. Back to my TI Inspire and use the TI Inspire to find out how long it is above the ground. I'm back at the TI Inspire. I need a little more room, so I'm going to move this out of the way. I now want to draw the graph of y equals 0 0.8. This time, I only want one of the intersection points. This one here between the graph and the line y equals 0 0.8. I'm going to go to menu, analyze graph, intersection point, touch that graph, touch that graph, slightly to the left, slightly to the right, and my ball is up in the air for 2.59 seconds. Make sure you answer the question. So ball in air for 2.59 seconds. D. Find the total distance travelled by the ball. Well, this would be found using the integral between 0 and 2.59 seconds 
of the modulus function of v with respect to t dt. But we're not given the velocity function. We know that h with respect to t is equal to 13t minus 4.9t squared. So if we differentiate that, we'll get v dt is equal to 13 minus 2 times 4.9 is 9.8t. So I am going to integrate between 0 and 2.59 the modulus function of 13 minus 9.8t with dt on my TI Inspire. So I've opened a calculator page on the TI Inspire. So I need my integral button. There it is. It goes from 0 to 2.59. I want the modulus function. So there's the modulus button. So the function is 13 minus 9.8x with respect to x press enter so the total distance traveled is 16.4 meters so the distance traveled equals 16.4 meters part e find the velocity of the cricket ball at t equals one second well, we already know that v with respect to t is equal to 13 minus 9.8t. So if we want v1, it's equal to 13 minus 9.8. So v is equal to 3.2 ms to the minus 1.